If you use Kaplink a lot, this video will save you a lot of time. I'm going to show you 10 hidden features that are underutilized that creators can use to save time in Kaplink. Hello world, um, I'm Julia, I'm the co-founder and CEO here at Kapwing. In this video, I am going to show you 10 hacks that you can use with Kapwing. Features that are underutilized, that not that many people know about, but can really supercharge your content creation and also just save you time if you use Kapwing a lot. Mostly I'm making this because it is raining here in San Francisco and we are in lockdown, so there's nothing to do, but also because I wanted to celebrate us reaching um, 20K YouTube subscribers. Thank you so much for all the support, um, for subscribing to this channel and for watching our videos. I'm super proud of all the progress that we've made so far and just wanted to make something where um, I can speak directly to our creators and show you some like underutilized features that we've built into Kapwing. This video is also a product research video because I'm going to use iMovie for the first time. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, the first hack is that you can import videos and music assets directly from YouTube. So you do not need to download a YouTube video and then re-upload it to Kapwing. You can just copy the URL, paste it into Kapwing, and we will import the asset directly. Um, this will save a lot of space on your computer and it will save you a lot of time importing assets into the editor. And yeah, you can also trim uh, your clips after you upload them or import them from YouTube. You do not have to pre-trim them using some website like youtubecutter.com. The same goes for TikTok, Instagram, Google Drive links, and almost any other URL on the internet. You don't have to download your content first, just import it directly. It'll save you a lot of time. This is useful for fan edits, for resizing, for syndicating content, and for um, getting background music, because you can just get your music directly from YouTube instead of having to download an MP3 file. Okay, second hack are our hidden placeholders. So placeholders are elements that you can find in the settings modal, the settings overlay. Um, in a placeholder, the idea is that you can create a design for like an IGTV piece or like for your podcast, but you can drop in the actual asset, like the actual video or media asset later. So this is really nice for visual consistency across your projects. For example, if you wanted to create a story layout where you had the logo and the text in exactly the same place, but then you wanted to use that for like many different stories, you can create a placeholder on Kapwing and just make a copy of your placeholder design for every subsequent episode. So yeah, we introduced this feature to make uh, creating templates easier for companies and for our team internally. So. Um, if you want to make a placeholder, just find it in the settings file, create a placeholder and you can treat it just like any other asset and then come back later, make a copy. And, um, when you make a copy, you can just click on the placeholder asset and replace the placeholder with a photo or a video. Okay. Third hidden feature is project search or how you import older projects into a new project within Kapwing. So as any video creator knows, you have oftentimes recurring assets that you use throughout your video series. So maybe you have like a watermark or an intro or an outro where mostly that element stays the same throughout your videos. It's nice to have it once in your workspace and not have to like find it on your computer every time that you want to use that asset. So in order to import an asset from your workspace, you can go ahead and click on this um, upload tab and then you can use this projects folder. So what this is, is this is a search in your workspace. So you can see here, I'm in the content marketing workspace right now. This is our team workspace that we use for creating videos. Yeah, I'm gonna just search for the title of the project that I wanna import. So in this case, I want to import our bumper, which is like our outro that we use for our social media videos. So you can see, I just click on it and it imports here. Kapwing. Perfect. I'm just gonna just add the background to be black. And so now I've added my outro and rather than having to have uploading it every time that I make a new Instagram story or a new episode of this series, I can just um, search for the project in my workspace. Fourth is multi-audio. So people complain to us all the time that Kapwing does not support multiple audio tracks, but it does, it does. We have made a Help Center article about this, a YouTube video, a resources article. We've shared it on every social media account. 
but still people have trouble finding this feature. So I wanna start by saying, we hear you. This should not be a hidden feature. It should be obvious for how you can add multiple audio tracks. But in the meantime, before it's obvious, this is how you add multiple audio tracks to Kabling. So you do not have to upload audio through the audio tab. You can actually upload audio just by dragging audio files directly onto the canvas. I'm gonna do that by just dragging from my downloads folder. So now that background music is uploading, it then I'm also gonna upload at the same time this sound effect. So now my background music is uploading, it's just about to be done, um, and I can play them all together. So now I wanna time out when the sound effects appears, and I also wanna trim down the length of the background music. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this uh, audio track to be shorter. I'm gonna drag it down to be the same length as the um, initial video. I might need to zoom in a bit to make it go. There we go. Okay, now my um, that audio track is uh, my background music, which lasts the whole length of the video. And then I can just move, drag this around just to happen when I want it to. So Kapoing is a contract. You can actually add unlimited audio tracks in here, um, as many as you want, and you can trim in line and move things around just like iMovie, except that uh, Kapoing actually supports multi-audio where iMovie doesn't. You can also click on the sound to decrease the volume of it. So I'm gonna decrease the volume to be like 25% or so. And that will make it so that Grace's voice is easier to hear. So fifth is progress bars. These are basically bars that fill up progressively over the duration of your video. And you can use them creatively to add really cool animations to your scenes. Okay, so to add a progress bar in Kapwing, open your video project and click on elements and then add progress bar. It's literally that easy. And um, you can see that the progress bar has been added here on the bottom. The forum. So that is like the most basic way to add progress bars. This progress bar will gradually fill up over the course of that video. Um, but I can also make it more exciting by changing the color, um, adding styles like a glow style, um, or changing the appearance of how it fills, adding a gradient to the fill, um, or playing around with like other kinds of styles that um, might fit my brand or like my style of video here, for example. I've, made the outline a gradient colors, the outline fills, even with the transparent. There are a ton of creative ways to use progress bars to spice up your social media posts. So definitely check it out. So sixth is Lock Layers. So we just launched Lock. Our new engineer, Ryan, um, launched Lock as his starter project. And Lock is exactly what it is in Photoshop or in any other editing software. Basically, you can lock a layer in place so that uh, you stop like selecting that layer accidentally in the editor. To lock the layer, I'm just gonna click on that layer, select it, and there's actually two ways to lock. I can either choose this lock action while that layer is selected. And now you can see that in the main layers menu, that um, asset, this uh, background image is locked here. So it's no longer selectable. I can move other things around on top of it and add more designs and fix more things without selecting that background layer, which is really useful. Um, I can also unlock it directly from the layers menu. So just click that unlock button to make it selectable again. The second way to lock is just to lock directly from that layers menu. So I can toggle that button here. Seven is hue rotate. Honestly, just one of the cutest features in Kapoit. Shah Ahmed, who's our product manager, basically came up with this hue rotate idea himself and built it um, and it's pretty awesome. So it is a magical animation in, that's built into Kapwing that uh, lets you change the colors of a um, image or a video layer. So to add hue rotate animation, you just select the image video or GIF layer, click this animate tab, and then select the hue rotate option. You can see you can even change the speed. You can make it like rotate really quickly or slowly. Um, and that is how you add Q rotate. So it can be like really funny. It can be like a way to grab attention. It can be kind of trippy and like make some, your thing kind of cool looking. Um, it is a great animation to add to a project to bring attention to an image or a video layer and just like to add a like weird, cool, hippie vibe. If you're still watching to this point in the video, I'm impressed. You must like really love Kapoing. I don't want to disappoint. It's number eight is removing a background and downloading a PNG with a transparent background. 
So this actually isn't that hidden. A lot of people know that this is possible in Kapwing, um, but I still feel like it's underutilized for how cool it is. So um, on Kapwing, you can remove the background of an image or a video. And for an image, you can download that PNG with a transparent background. Okay, so to make a transparent PNG, you just upload your image that you want to cut out into the Kapwing Studio. Then you click on the image and click this erase tool. Now Kapwing has this magic wand, which is selected by default and also a manual eraser. So this would allow you to like actually go through and like manually erase pixels. Um, in this case, I'm erasing this background from this picture of SpongeBob. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click the magic wand tool, select the white background and then click the delete button um, to delete it um, and then click done. I can also like crop out areas of that image if I want to, in addition to just like make sure I only get the area that I want to actually um, download as a PNG. Great. So now I've removed the background. I cropped down my image to the right size. Last step is to actually make the background transparent. So I just click this, um, this transparent color selector underneath background color on that layer. So now the background color is transparent. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's see, SpongeBob PNG. If I click export image, this will give me a PNG that then I can save and reuse in other projects with the transparent background. Okay, we're almost at the end. Number nine is uploading a custom font. So if you're a brand or you're a creator, or maybe you're just like trying to copy like a famous brand like Star Wars, Disney or something like that, um, you might have like a particular font you need to use either for your subtitles or title card or like some element of the video. So it's actually possible in Kapwing to upload a custom font. This is one of our paid features, so you have to be a pro subscriber in order to publish a video with a custom font, but I'm gonna show you quickly how you can use and upload a custom font in Kapwing. So I am going to um, edit this project I already made on Kapwing, which has subtitles on it. And I wanna change the font of the subtitles to this new font that I found on freefont.com. Um, so I'm going to open the subtitles tab to make, to get to the subtitle fonts and then just click on this font menu here. Right now it's selected as Helvetica. You can see, I'm going to click on that and click the more fonts option. So uploading custom font is underneath more fonts. So here is the more fonts overlay. I'm going to click on upload font in order to import my custom font. I downloaded my font file, like I said, off free fonts, and then I unzipped the file. And now I'm looking for, just like Kapwing says, a TTF or an OTF, OTF file. So here is my TTF file. I'm going to drag it in and drop it onto that drop area and wait for the font to upload. And then it'll appear as an option here. Here's this font. It's called Envelope. Um, it's a really like curly font. You can see um, here is the font here. Once I've uploaded the font, I can actually use this font in regular text layers too. So let's say, for example, I had a title on this um, video. You can see that that font has been saved and now is in my workspace and here so I can use it on any layer later. I can apply all the other same, you know, uh, tools that I can normally apply to text layers um, here within Kapwing. Yeah, that's excellent for like adding designs, making like really cool uh, timely stuff like for the holidays and just so many other creations where you might want to be using custom font in your design. Okay, the very last Kapwing hack is kind of a joke because it's that easy, but it is how to remove the Kapwing watermark. How to remove the watermark is like a top query when you search for Kapwing on Google. So yeah, clearly this is still a problem that uh, people need some information about. A uh, hack here is that you have to be signed in to either a Facebook or a Google account to use Kapwing watermark free. So if you're not signed in and you create something on Kapwing, it will have a Kapwing watermark in the corner. If you want to remove that watermark, you just click the big purple sign in to remove watermark button. It's free. You do not have to pay us or enter any credit card information. All you have to do is sign in with a Facebook or a Google account in order to remove the watermark. Your video will be reprocessed and the output will this time not have watermark once you're signed in. So I encourage people to sign in even before they click export video so that it's just watermark free the first time um, and so that your creations and all of your projects are auto saved to your accounts. So you can access them and download them later. Um, the only hacky part of this is it is possible to remove the watermark for someone else, but only if you have the URL to their final download page. If you don't, then you'll have to just use other tricks for removing watermarks like um, you know, cropping it out or covering it up or something like that. So how do you remove the Kapwing watermark? You sign in to remove the watermark and then Kapwing will reprocess the video watermark free.
thanks so much for watching. Um, I had a ton of fun making this video and hopefully you learned something about how to use Kapwing and how to save time while making content. Um, and yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already for more content creation tips and tips about using Kapwing. We put out tons of videos and articles every week. So um, yeah, subscribe to get more. Thanks. Bye.